All living organisms are made up of world cells. The component of living organisms are world cells. That's the reason why a cell is referred to as a world, a unit or basic structural and functional unit of world, life. So we say cell is a world, is a unit of world, life. A unit of world, life. Or it can also be defined as the basic structural and functional unit of world, life. Which means that all living organisms composed of what? Cells. Or they are made up of what? Cells. You understand that? So if you look at the other one, the next one, living organism based on cells. The other time I said all living organisms are made up of cells. You understand that? So living organisms are divided into two based on the number of cells they possess. Living organisms are what? Divide into two based on the number of cells they do what? Possess. So we have living organism divided into two. Living organism divided into two based on the number of what? Cell. Now, the first one is called what? Unicellular. It's called what? Unicellular. It's called what? Unicellular organism. Unicellular organism. We also call it a cellular organism. We also call it what? As cellular organisms. Are you getting me now? Why the second one is referred to as what? Multicellular. It's referred to as what? Multicellular organism. Multicellular organism. Don't forget, all living organisms are made up of what? Cell. That's the reason why a cell is defined as a basic structural and functional unit of what? Life. Are you getting me now? So all those living organisms now, they are divided into two based on the number of cells they possess. And what are the two divisions? We have unicellular or acellular organisms. We have what? Unicellular or acellular organisms. And the second one is called what? Multicellular organisms. What is the meaning of these two? The unicellular organisms are organisms that are made up of only one cell. Made up of what? Only one cell. They are one-celled organisms. They are one-celled what? Organisms. Organisms that are made up of what? Only one cell. Are you getting me now? They are one-celled what? Organisms. For instance, or e.g., we have the likes of what? Amoeba. Amoeba is an example of a cellular or unicellular what? Organism. Paramecium is another example of unicellular what? Organism. We have... Chlamydomonas, we have Chlamydomonas, Domonas, we have Euglena, Euglena, and so on and so forth. For all these are the example of organisms that are made up of what? Only one cell. We call them what? One celled organism. Are you getting me now? The cellular or what? A cellular. Are you getting me now? And the second one, the opposite of what? In the cellular. Multi means what? Many. Any organism that are made up of more than two cells, the composed of what? More than two cells are referred to as what? Multicellular what? Organism. Are you getting me now? They are referred to as what? Multicellular organism. So we also call them many-celled organism. Many-celled organism. We also call them what? Many-celled organism. And you, they, they can be ranged from a simple multicellular organism and to complex multicellular organism. Are you getting me now? For instance, now, Hydra is a multicellular organism. Are you getting me now? Man, a multicellular organism. But you cannot compare the structure and complexity of Hydra to what? Man. Are you getting me now? That's the reason why I, I said multicellular organism, we have some that we refer to as what? A simple multicellular organism. Why some are referred to as what? Complex multicellular organisms. Do you understand that? We have so many examples under multicellular what? Organisms. Did you understand that? Then after that, we're going to look at a short history about what? Cell. Short history about what? Cell. History of cell. History of cell. Now, the first man that used the word cell. Although it's not the first one that makes use of microscope. The first one that, that make that use the word cell is called Robert Hooke. It's called what? Robert Hook. Robert Hook. Robert Hook. This man is from England. So he's an English scientist. He makes use of 
a simple microscope to discover a cell. Are you getting me now? In the year 1665. In the year what? 1665. But what he viewed under microscope then was uh, the wall of a dead plant cell. Wall of a what? Dead plant cell. So he concludes that the cell is made up of an empty room. Are you getting me now? He called it cell. Are you getting me now? An empty room. What he don't know is that he is viewing a dead plant what? cell. A dead one of the word plant cell. Are you getting me now? So after a few years, there was a man called Anton. Anton von Liu Wen Ock. This man is the first man that discover or that view a living word cell. A living word cell. He's the one that discovered that. Truly, cell comprises of what? A living material because it viewed living cell. But the reason why we don't mention this man at all under the history of cell is because he is the one that faces the word war cell. Do you understand that? So after that, he discovered his own in the year 1678. Are you getting me now? Then after that, we have another man. He's called Felix Dujardin. Felix Dujardin. The jardin. Don't forget, he viewed a dead cell. Are you getting me now? He viewed a word, a dead cell, and assume it is what empty. Are you getting me now? So after so many years, you understand that this man now viewed the same cell, a living cell. He discovered that they are made up of a living material. They are made up of a lot, a living material, and he called that living material protoplasm. In the year. 1835. In the year what? 1835. Are you getting me now? Look at the year. 1800 to 1600. Almost 200 years. Two centuries. You understand that? So you expect that science will have this developed more. Are you getting me now? So the microscope made it up by Felix Dujardin is more developed and more advanced than the one made use of by what? Robert Hooks and what? Anton von Leeuwen Ock. Are you getting me now? That's the reason he is able to discover that the so-called empty cell consists of what? A living material. And he called that living material what? Protoplasm. Normally, it is called saccord. It is called what? Saccord. The saccord is now Latinized into what? The word protoplasm. The word pr protoplasm. Do you understand that? Then after that, another man is called... It's called Matthias Kleden. Matthias Kleden. Matthias Kleden. He was a Germany botanist. Are you getting me now? He's from, a, he's from Germany. He was a, a German botanist. And he works on plants. He works on what? Plants. So in the year 1830, in the year 1838, he discovered that parts of plants, the roots, the stem, the leaves, they are all made up of what? Cell. They are made up of what? Cell. It works on the root of plant, works on the stem, works on every part of plant, and it discovered that they are all made up of what? Cell. In the year 1838. In the year what? 1838. Three, three years after, Felix Dujardin discovered that a cell is made up of a living material called protoplasm. Did you understand that? Then a year after, another man comes down. His name is Theodore Schwann. Theodore what? Schwann. Theodore Schwann. He's also from Germany. In fact, Matthias Clarin and Theodore Schwann, they are colleagues. They are what? Colleagues. They are colleagues. But he was uh, a botanist. Why Theodore Schwann was what? A zoologist. Are you getting me now? So when he was working on what? Plant. Mate, uh, Taylor Schwann was working on what? Animal. And he discovered that every part of animal comprises of what? Cell. Or is made up of what? Cell. In the year 1839. In the year what? 1839. It was after their discovery that both of them, after their discovery that both of them propound cell theory. Are you getting me now? Initially, the five cell theory that you are seeing, initially it was what? Three. Are you getting me now? The first three cell theory was propounded by what? 
Matthias Claden and what? Theodore Schwann in the year 1839. Are you getting me now? So after a few years, then another man now come up. His name is what? Rudolf von Vichu. Rudolf is also a German von Vichu. In the year 1855. In the year what? 1855. He now discovered that new cell uh, arises from pre-existing cell. New cell does what? Arises from what? Pre-existing cell. That means new cell comes from previously what? Existing cell in the year 1855. Do you understand that? In the year what? 1855. Don't forget, we have what? Theodore Schwann, Matthias Kleden, Rodo von Vichu. Three of them are what? German. Are you getting me now? Felix Dujardin was, is from what? France. He was a uh, French. Why Robert Hooks was what? An English word, man. Do you understand that? Then after that, we look at the cell word theories. The cell word theories. Now, initially, cell theory, they were what? Theory. Propound by what? Theodore Schwann and what? Matthias Ward, Scladden. The first one, cell is a word. Basic unit of what? Life. Basic unit of what? Of life. It's a basic unit of what? Life. That's the first one. The number two. All living organisms are made up of cell. All living organism, living organism, all living organisms are made up of cell. All living organisms are made up of what? Cells. That's number two. Then number three. Living organism are living organism organisms are either single cell single cell I wait me to rub this part off. Living organism are either single cell or group of cells. Or what? Group of cells. Group of, of cells. And in, uh, number four. There is no life apart from the life of cell. There is no life apart from the life of cell and the last throne that is the work of what Rudolf von Vichu new cell arises from what new cells arises from pre-existing cell pre-existing cell now let's, let's look at it one after the other now the first one is what a cell is a unit of what life or a cell is a basic unit of what life it means that living organism generally cannot survive without what a cell without what a cell do you understand that the second one, all living organisms are made up of what? Cell. We've talked about that here. All living organisms, they are made up of what? Cell. Are you getting me now? And I said, yeah, those living organisms are divided into two. Is that the living organism is having only one word? Cell. Unicellular or what? A cellular. Or is having what? Many cells. Two or more. Are you getting me now? Then number three, living organisms are either single cell. They will either be what? Unicellular or a cellular. Or what? Group of cell. That is what? Multicellular. Did you understand that? Then the next one. There is no life apart from the life of what? Cell. The life we are living is from the life that cells what? In the body lives. Do you understand that? For instance, we are able to survive because of what? Energy. Yes or no? Without energy, living organisms will not be able to carry out their day-to-day -day work activities yes or no and this energy we are making use of or the energy we are exhausting you understand is from mitochondria is from what 
Mitochondria is an organism of what? Cell. Do you understand that? So meaning that there is no life apart from the life of what? Cell. Are you getting me now? Let me give another example. One of the most important organs in the body is heart. Are you getting me now? It pumps blood. Today you are born. Are you getting me now? It does. It pumps blood every second. Are you getting me now? It is an organ. Yes or no? Under organization of life, organs are made up from what? Similar tissues. Yes or no? And the tissues are formed from what? Similar what? Cells. Are you getting me? That means that organs act. Cannot even exist or cannot survive without what? The cell that made up of the world. Do you understand that? So there is no life apart from the life of what? Cell. And the last one, new cell arises from pre-existing what? Cell. Are you getting me now? This one is under growth. For every new cell that are produced or that comes up, they are being produced from what? Those that have been existing before. Do you understand that? These are the what? Five theory of cells. Then the next Thing that we're going to look at is the structure of plants and animal world cell. Sorry, before that, we we'll look at forms in which cell world exist. Forms, forms in which cell exist. Now, cell can exist in four different forms. Cell can exist in what? Four different world forms. They can exist as single and free living. And what? Free living. Single and free living organism. Number two. They can exist as a colony. As a what? A colony. A colony. Three. They can exist as what? Filament. As what? Filament. And for They can exist as part of living, living organism. They can exist as what? Parts. As part of living what? Organisms. As part of living organisms. Now, let me explain it. Cell can exist as single and free living organism. Meaning, there are some organisms that are made up of only one cell or single cell. Are you getting me now? And they are able to carry out all characteristics of living things. Are you getting me now? They can live freely. They can live independently. For instance, we have some organisms like what? Amoeba. Like what? Amoeba is a free living organism, independent, you understand? And it's made up of only one cell. We have organisms like what? Paramecium. Like what? Paramecium. Are you getting me now? So a cell can exist as single and free living. Single and what? And free living. You understand that? Then, secondly, a cell can exist as what? Colony. What is a colony? A colony is formed when similar cells mass together and function as what one entity and function as what one entity for instance eg we have we have volvox we have what volvox volvox is a mass of what chlamydomonas are you getting me now chlamydomonas mass together they all come together to form what volvox and that volvox can act as what? As a, an entity. Do you understand that? Another example of colony. And another example of colony is what? Pando Rina. That's another example of colony. Are you getting me now? Then a, a cell can also exist as what? Filament. As what? Filament. E.g., we have the likes of what? Spirogyra. Spirogyra. We have Zegnema. And so on and so forth. Are you getting me now? The difference between filament and colony is that in colony, the cells mass together. But in filament, the cell, the similar cell join together end to end in a linear form. Do you understand that? They join together end to end in a world, in a linear form. That's the reason why if you want to pro or call spirogyra, you said filamentous world, spirogyra. Are you getting me now? 
Then the last one is what? A cell can exist as part of living oh. organism. Meaning, every living organism has cell as their unit of what? Life. As a unit of what? Life. And this, if this cell now combine together, cell of similar function and structure, they form what? Tissues. They form what? Tissues. When similar tissues combine together, they form what? Organ. They form what? And when similar organs combine together, they form what? System. They form what? And in higher organism, advanced organism, system form what? Organism. Form what? Organisms. Do you understand that this is an organization of what? Of life. That means a cell can, can be in form of what? Part of living organism. Do, do you understand that? Yes. And after you are going to look at what? The structure of both plants. We are going to look at plant cell. Look at the animal cell. We look at the structure. And we compare both together. So let's look at the structure. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the structure of both plant cell and what? Animal cell. We look at the similarities and differences between them. This is a plant cell, the structure of plant cell, and this is the structure of what? Animal cell. Are you getting me now? For every cell, either plant or animal cell, for every cell, either plant or animal cell, they comprise of three things. The first one is called plasma membrane. It's called what? Plasma membrane. Plasma membrane. That is the cover. The, the outermost layer of the world, of the cell. The second one, the second one is called nuclear material. It's called what? Nuclear, nuclear materials. Or nucleus. Nuclear materials. And the third one is called cytoplasm. It's called what? Cyto what? Plasm. So every cell, either plant cell or animal cell, Comprised of this three part, the plasma membrane, which is the what? The layer, the outer layer, or the layers of the what? Of the cell. Are you getting me now? The nuclear materials, that is the what? The nucleus. Are you getting me now? And the cytoplasm. So under cytoplasm, we have cell organelles. We have what? Cell organelles. We have what? Cell organelles. What are the cell organelles? The likes of the vacuole, the mitochondria, the Golgi body, the plastid, and so on and so forth. Are you getting me now? So let's look at the plant cell. This is a plant cell. In the plant cell, you have three layers. How many layers? Three, three layers. layers. Three plasma walls, membrane. We have the what? The outer cell wall. We have the middle lamella. And we have what? The inner cell membrane. Are you getting me now? The cell wall, the middle lamella, and the what? Inner cell membrane. Are you getting me now? After that, we have the word, the nuclear material. What is the nuclear material? The nucleus. Are you getting me now? Under the nucleus, we have the likes of what? The nuclear membrane. That is the outermost layer of the word, of the nucleus. That bond the word, the nuclear word, content. Do you understand that? So inside the nu nucleus, we have the likes of what? The chromosome or the chromatic thread. We have the nucleus and so on and so forth. Did you understand that? Then the last one is the word, cytoplasm, which contains... Cell organelles. So, what is cytoplasm? Cytoplasm is the liquid or semi liquid portion of the cell. Is the word liquid or semi liquid portion of the word cell which suspends other cell organelles? What are the other cell organelles? We have the likes of what? Endoplasmic reticulum, which helps to distribute what? Materials within the cell organelles. Are you getting me now? Then, under this endoplasmic reticulum, we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have how many types? Two types of endoplasmic reticulum. We have smooth endoplasmic reticulum and we have what? Rough endoplasmic what? Reticulum. S-E-A and what? R-E. I mean S-E-R and what? R-E-R. Don't forget, the abbreviation of endoplasmic reticulum is what? E-R. And I said we have two types. We have the smooth and the what? Rough. Do you understand that? So the difference between the smooth and the plasma reticulum and rough is that the rough has a ribosome attaching to the word endoplasmic the reticulum. Are you getting me now? Under smooth and the plasma reticulum, there is nothing attaching to it. But under rough, the rough, the, you see my um, ribosome attaching to the body of the word rough endoplasmic word reticulum. So the difference between the two is that this one has 
ribosome attaching to it. Why this one does not have what? Ribosome attaching to it. Did you understand that? Then after the endoplasmic reticulum, other cell organelles, we have the vacuole. We have the word vacuole. What is the function of vacuole? Vacuole helps to store some food materials, waste product, and pigment. Are you getting me now? Then the next one is what? Mitochondrion. Is what? Mitochondrion. Mitochondrion is referred to as the powerhouse of the cell. It's referred to as the word powerhouse of the cell. Because large or the highest amount of energy produced by cell is what? Is from what? Mitochondrion. It's from what? Mitochondrion. Do you understand that? Then after that, we have what? Plastid. We have what? Plastid. We have what? Plastid. Now, plastid is also called chloroplast. Plastid, plastid can also be called what? Chloroplast. And what is chloroplast? The green pigment of the word plant. Are you getting me now? The green pigment of the word plant. Are you getting me now? Then the next one is what? Is Golgi body. Is what? Golgi body. Now, one of the function of Golgi body is to store some uh, materials. Are you getting me now? It's to store some what? Materials. If that material is related to carbohydrates, some materials are stored inside the word Golgi body. Are you getting me now? Then, let's look at the nucleus or the nuclear materials. Under the nuclear materials, the first one is what? Nuclear membrane. Is what? Nuclear, nuclear membrane. membrane. The first one is nuclear membrane. Inside nuclear membrane, you have chromosome. You have what? Chromosome. Now, this chromosome is a rod-like structure that houses a unit of hereditary called gene. Called what? Gene. It houses a unit of hereditary called what? Gene. Are you getting me? That's the reason why we, 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 we decide that nucleus, one of the functions of the nucleus is to store hereditary materials. To store what? Hereditary materials. The reason is because inside one of the nuclear materials is what? Chromosome. And the function of chromosome is to house gene. And what is gene? A unit of what? Hereditary. A unit of what? Heredity. Do you understand that? Now, let's look at the uh, animal cell. Animal cells also have endoplasmic reticulum. That's what? Cytoplasm. That's what? Uh, mitochondria. It has goggy body, vacuole. You understand? But what is in this uh, animal cell that is not in plant cell is what? Lysosome. Is what? Lysosome. Is what? Lysosome. Lysosome helps to break down one out materials in the world, in the cell. It helps to break down one out materials in the world, cell. Are you getting me now? So let's now look at the two and differentiate the two cell. Let's look at the two and differentiate the two. We'll look at the diagram to write the word differences. Differences between plant and what? Animal cell. Between. Between plants and Animal cell. Animal cell. We are going to tabulate and we'll try as much as possible to manage our the board. Animal cell. Then we have what? Plant cell. Now let's look at the two together. Let's differentiate. What, do you, what can you say in plant cell that is not in the animal cell? Cell, cell wall. That's number one. So, plant cell has what? Cell wall. Cell wall. Then in animal cell, the cell wall is what? Absent. Is what? Absent. Do you understand that? Then what are the other things that you can see that, that differentiate plants from animal cell? In plant cell, we have what? Vacuum. It is very large. Are you getting me now? But animal cell, we also have vacuum, but they are small and numerous. So in animal cell, we have small and numerous vacuole. And numerous vacuole. This is one. This is two. But in plant cell, we have large words. 
vacuum. We have large vacuum. Do you understand that? Number three, what other thing can you see? There is lysosome in what? Animal cell. But in plant cell, it's what? Absent. So in plant cell, absence of what? Lysosome. But in animal cell, presence of what? Lysosome. Oh, okay. Sorry. We have... Of what? Lysosome. And in plant cell is what? Absent. Now, in animal cell, we have middle what? Lamella. We have what? Middle lamella. But it is absent in what? In animal cell. So in animal cell, we have... Absence of what? Middle lamella. Middle lamella. But in plant cell is what? Present. Is what? Present. Now, another thing that I want to look at is that plant cell has what? Plastic. They have what? But it is absent in what? Animal cells. That's number five. Absent. But presence of what? Plastids. Of what? Plastid. Plastid. We have other differences. Like in plant cell, starch are stored in form of what? Starch. Why in animal cell, starch are stored? Um, uh, yes. Carbonides are stored in form of what? Starch. In plant cell. Why in animal cell, carbonides are stored in form of what? Glycogen. Are you getting me now? Another difference is in plant cell, Lipids are stored in form of what? Fat. Why in animal cell, lipids are stored in form of what? Oil. Do you understand that? So we have so many differences between plant and what? Animal cell. And you can use their structure also to look at the word similarities. Did you understand that? Any question or questions? Now let, let, me, let me give you an assignment on this topic. Let me give you an assignment on this topic. Before I give you the assignment, let me give it the summary. We look at the definition of what? Of cell. After that, living organism based on the no, number of cell. We have unicellular and what? Multicellular. Then we look at short history of what? Cell. Where we discuss about the discovery of what? Robert Hooks, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, Felix Dujardin, Matthias Kleden, Theodor Schwann, and Rodolfo von Vichu. And after that, I made it to understand that it was uh, Matthias Kleden and Theodor Schwann that first propound word, the first three words, cell theory in the year 1839. Are you getting me now? Yeah. Then after that, we we'll look at the word, forms in which cell exist. Cell can exist as what? Single and free living. They can exist as what? Colony, filaments, and what? As part of living organism. Because after that, we we'll look at the word, the structure of plant and animal cell, which you can all see on the board. Then we we'll discuss about the differences that in the structure of plant and what animal cell so the question the assignment i'm giving you today is to list list five type five types of cells in Animal and plants. Five types of cells in animal and plant each. Five types of cells in animal and plant each. Five types of cells in animal and what? Plant each. If you look at animal, animal body, look at a type, five different types of cells that you can see. You understand that? And look at plants. Plants, five types of cells that you can see. Do you understand that? Then I'm going to collect the assignments and we'll discuss about it in our next class.